a while back, my husband and I decided to host a family gathering. And we had a little six-year-old girl with us. And she didn't really have anyone to play with. So she went looking for something to do. And she found this telephone that had cartoon characters all over it. So she decided to play with it. She was pretending to call her friends and invite them over. And she was having a great time until she got a surprise. 911, what is your emergency? This is 911, do you have an emergency? Yes. Yes. There are tigers here. So big, scary, mean tigers, and I am afraid. Now, she must have had a pretty convincing argument. But at some point in the conversation, she realized that she was in trouble. So she came downstairs and she told us what she had done. And her father took her aside and explained to her that 911 is nothing to be playing with. It's a very serious thing. But we were standing off to the side, giggling hysterically. Tigers? Where did she come up with tigers? We live in Pennsylvania. She was having a great time with her imagination that day. And she had to have been pretty convincing because we got a surprise. 911 called us, wanted to make sure that she was safe and sound. And they followed it up with a knock on our door from our local policeman saying, I need to see her. I need to see that she is safe and sound. And she was. She was no longer bored. She had a huge imagination. She did not use good judgment, but she used a lot of imagination. We have a tendency to, as soon as we feel just a moment of boredom, we reach for something to do, like our phone, or the internet, or the television. And we don't allow ourselves to do that mind wandering, to let ourselves just go off and think a little bit, to ponder, to, to reflect, to be imaginative, to be creative. And that's a shame, because in that time that you're daydreaming, that's actually what your brain likes to do. When you leave your brain alone and let it do whatever it wants, it starts daydreaming. They call it the default mode. And if you let your brain go there, you'll find some great things. That's where your creativity is. That's where innovation is. That's where you solve problems. All the things that you look at around us are here because someone had a creative idea, an innovative idea. And they use that to share. It's, it's the connections that you start to make. You see, creativity really is, when you try to define you know, and think about what creativity actually is. It's when you make those connections between, between two things. You put them together. When, when you didn't imagine that they even went together. Think of like a compound word, for example. When you have cheese and cake, you put it together and you have a completely new word. Cheesecake. Or sun and shine. Sunshine. Rain and bow. Rainbow. See, your brain likes to have these connections, these dots. Think of the, the dots being connected. And the more dots that you have, the better chance your brain has to make a unique connection. The more you give it to work with. And you, at this age, you can give your brain lots of dots to work with. And the more you do, those dots are going to stay with you for a lifetime. And you'll be reaching back, and you'll be grabbing a hold of that dot. You see, we actually have things like uh, the fonts in our computers. Because a man by the name of Steve Jobs, who created uh, Apple Computers, which built the iPhone, took a calligraphy class at Reed College. The barcode scanners that you step up to every time you buy something, those are there because a man by the name of Norman Joseph Woodland was sitting in the sand one day making codes, Morse code that he'd learned in the Army. And he used that technology and put it together with, with um, the Morse code, and he came up with something completely new and different. So the more you give your brain to work with, the better off it's going to be. We also are actually doing something really healthy for our brains when we are daydreaming. 
I bet you didn't think that. So you go through your entire day with people, uh, your parents, for example, saying, pay attention. Are you paying attention? To teachers, pay attention. Even when you go to after school activities, you have coaches and you have instructors saying, pay attention. This is the one time of day that you're not supposed to pay attention. In fact, that's kind of the point, to let your mind wander. When you do that, your brains are actually solving problems. And you're growing your brain, you're developing your brain. Because creativity and problem solving are very closely related. And when you do that, you let your brain develop new skills that you're going to come back into the classroom and learn and use to learn, to learn more things. You're developing critical thinking skills. And those are going to be really helpful for you. There was a group of researchers that decided they wanted to know what the relationship is between boredom and creativity. So, they went to a group of volunteers and they said, here are two plastic cups. What can you think of to do with these two plastic cups? Well, I could store my pens in them, I could drink from them, I could store markers or candy or beads. Yeah, those are all good answers. But then the researchers decided to intentionally make all those volunteers bored. Now how do you go about doing that? When you want to make someone bored, how do you do it? Well, they experimented with a bunch of different things. And what they found was the most effective way of making people bored was to ask them to read from the telephone book names and phone numbers alphabetically on and on for 20 minutes. They were bored. But the researchers came back and said, two plastic cups. What can you think of to do with these two plastic cups? Well, I could turn them upside down and take a marker and draw faces on them with hair and, and noses and eyes. And I could put on a puppet show with my friends. Or I could tie a string between the two of them. And on one side, I'd have someone talking. And on the other side, I'd have the sound traveling through. And you could hear it would be a telephone. They came up with such better answers. Why? Because first they'd been bored. And they tried this many times. In fact, what they have come to know is that when you are bored first, that's when you come up with some of the best answers. Let's take a look at a picture real quick. Some of you will look up here, and you will see the image of a young woman, a young, beautiful woman. And she happens to be looking over her shoulder, and you can see her necklines, the necklace, and she has this big feather coming out of the top of her head, of her hat. Yes? How many of you can see that image? Yeah. Okay. Now, how many of you look up there and you see the image of an older woman? Yeah, can you see that? She's looking down. She's kind of sad looking. She has a shawl over the top of her head. She has kind of a biggish nose. You see that? Can everyone see that? Yeah, okay, so here is the older woman. That's her mouth right there. That is an eye. That's her other eye. There's her nose. Mouth and a chin. Oh my gosh. 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 You cannot look up there at that image and see both simultaneously at the same time. You can either see the young woman, or you can see the old woman. Or you can switch back and forth very rapidly. But you can't hold that image of both of them in your head at the same time. Now, as you're looking at this, I notice that many of you got this look on your face like, Oh, I get it. I see, right? That is called the aha moment. It's actually called the aha moment. And that aha moment happens.
happens when your brain makes that connection and all of a sudden you go, ah, I get it. It's the light bulb going off. It's that moment when everything makes sense. And once you have seen it, you can't unsee it. It seems obvious to you that that existed, that that was already there. It seems really obvious. It seems to happen most frequently when we are about to fall asleep, or we're taking a shower, or walk in the woods. Those are the times that those aha moments take place the most often, when we're relaxed. Now, there was another group of researchers, just here at Drexel University, that wanted to know what does the brain look like inside when someone has an aha moment. So they have this machine, it's called a functional MRI machine, and they hook people up and they put them inside this, volunteers again, and this time the problem was, how do we make them have an aha moment? Ready? Go. Right? No, they couldn't do that. So the researchers gave them a problem to solve. This is the problem that they asked them to solve. Find a fourth word that creates a compound word. And remember, a compound word is like cheese and cake. You put it together and you have a new word, a compound word, cheesecake. So find a fourth word that creates a compound word with each of these. Pine, crab, and sauce. And what they found was that as they were watching those brains go to work on that, they could tell who was going to have an aha moment by as much as eight seconds. Does that seem like a long time? One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Eight seconds. And they could almost read someone's mind what that next thought was going to be. They could, they could determine that. And it was based on something called alpha waves. Now, I'm not a scientist, and I don't know a whole lot about alpha waves, but I know that when you have a lot of them, that indicates that you're very relaxed. And that's when you have more of those aha moments. It's making those connections. Anytime you have those connections available to you, and you can, can join them together, that's where creativity is. And that's what you can have. But sometimes we find that it, kind of, it can be kind of difficult to get started, to have that first thought that will let our brains start daydreaming. I'll bet you've had that moment, but you had some great ideas. So when I think of that, I think of pop. A little thing to help me get started when my brain is, is saying, I don't know what to do. I don't. So you, you can do, it's P, it's O, and it's P. P stands for plan. You can ask yourself things like, all right, today when I get home from school, what am I going to do? I think I will. Or next year for my birthday party, I'd like to do this. That's plan. Another question you can ask yourself is to observe. You can ask your brain to observe. It's, it's what do I see? What do I see that I haven't noticed yet? Is it a color? Maybe it's people watching. You ever know any people watching? Yeah, it can be really interesting to think of the stories that might be associated with someone's life. And thirdly, it's ponder. To think. How does, hmm, what if, or why does something happen? Those are great starting points to get your brain working. And another thing that you can do after you, you let your brain go daydreaming, you want other activities, things that you can do that keep you rolling and keep your, your imagination going, your creativity. And you had some great ideas. In fact, one of the things that you might want to do as you go into the summer months is to come up with a list of great things to do. You might have on that list a lot of the things that you already had. You might add to that, create a code or have a photo shoot with lots of great costumes, or make a video, or write a play, or write a story, go on a scavenger hunt, make an obstacle course. There are tons of great things that you can do that are creative and will add lots and lots of dots into your brain, that you can make those creative combinations, those creative connections. And when you use those, you'll find that you are going to be able to embrace boredom. And that's what I'm really asking all of you to do today. The next time you feel a little bit of boredom coming on, I want you to shift your thinking just a little bit. Find one of the pictures that we were looking at earlier. 
So you may see, when you shift your thinking, you may see the old woman. You may see the young woman. You may see a picture of a couple standing on the side of a lake. Or in that same picture, you may see an infant lying on its back, sucking its thumb. Thank you so very much for your kind attention.